So get your home made with furniture and decor from homedepot.com. Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. President Biden signing the CHIPS Act yesterday and the Inflation Reduction Act set for a House vote likely this Friday. Joining us right now with more on the Inflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS Act, Representative Rokana, who represents Silicon Valley and was at the White House for the CHIPS signing. Good morning to you. I don't know if we should talk CHIPS or we should really talk about the Inflation Reduction Act because there's just so much debate and commotion about so many various pieces of it. I want to go to inflation, if I could, just for a moment. Uh, and I want to start there because obviously there's a debate about whether this is actually going to end inflation or even uh, reduce inflation at all. Do you have a view about that? And I know some people, by the way, who say, I don't even care if it doesn't end uh, or reduce inflation. I'm here for the for the climate piece of it, or I'm here for the health care piece of it, or I'm here for the IRS piece of it. Over the long run, I think it'll have a de deflationary impact. I'm not going to say that it's going to lower inflation right away. But if you're making things in the United States, if we're going to be making solar panels, if we're going to have more energy independence, that means that it's going to have less inflation. Are you a believer, by the way, now to bring it back to the CHIPS Act, that the CHIPS Act ultimately is inflationary? No, uh, Andrew, we've been uh, shipping the semiconductors from uh, China at $15,000 a container. That's what's causing the inflation. I mean, our cars can't have the semiconductor chips. So if we're bringing production back into the United States, if we are uh, bringing manufacturing back into the United States, in the long run, that's going to help lower price. Except for the fact that we typically uh, charge more for our labor and therefore there are higher costs. I mean, you know, this is going to sound like blasphemy, but I've heard people say, you know, maybe we should have uh, built these fabs in Mexico. Well, look at what, first of all, the cost has been, as, they, as you know. I mean, the shipping costs have gone up from 2000 to $14,000. The but making semiconductor chips is a very, very complex process. And China is building 30 of these fabs. Uh, Taiwan's building 19. With this, we're only going to build 12. Here's what I don't understand. I mean, we didn't invent the automobile. We didn't invent the jet engine. We figured out the mass production in America. That's how we became a great superpower. We invented the semiconductor chip in uh, the Bell Labs and in my district, and somehow we thought mass production didn't matter. That was a costly mistake. We're fixing that now. Um, when you think about... Um the IRS, and I don't know if you saw, we, had, we did a segment um, in the last hour about the IRS. There's a lot of commotion, uh, a lot of talking points around the fact that 87,000 employees uh, were, 87,000 people will be working at the IRS and what that means for your chance of, not just your chance of getting audited, but the cost of getting audited uh, for people who are either running small businesses uh, or for individuals who can't afford it. What do you tell them? I tell them, like everyone, pay your taxes. I mean, this is not designed for tax, uh, you know, clever schemes. This is going after people who just aren't honestly paying their taxes. Uh, and there are almost trillion dollars of revenue because of that. That's not me. That's Larry Summers. He did this groundbreaking paper that a lot of our money in the revenue we're not collecting because people aren't being honest about it. Uh, most people are teachers or firefighters. Uh, you have to, on the W-2, you're honest about your taxes. And if people are honest about their taxes, this won't be an issue. Um, while we have you on, on the Inflation Reduction Act, can you, did, have you ever had any conversations with Kristen Cinema? I think there was a lot of uh, head scratching over this issue, <laughs> specifically around carried interest and why she decided for, for whatever reason uh, that this was the, the, I don't want to say the hill to die on, but that she, this, she was going to, she was going to make a fight. Do you know why she did that? Well, I've had a lot of conversations with Senator Manchin. I'm proud of them. I have not uh, had conversations with Sen uh, Senator Sinema. Here's what my speculation could be, because I hear the arguments all the time in Silicon Valley. Uh, we need this as an investment uh, a, a incentive. Uh, why, row are you for getting rid of the carried interest loophole? And I tell them, come on, you're going to make investment decisions because you want a thousand times return on Google or Facebook. Uh, the idea that you need a carried interest loophole is just wrong. But it's there are a lot of people in uh, private equity and 
venture capital who really believe in this, and she probably heard from a lot of them. Uh, some of us said no to them, and she, for whatever reason, thought bought their arguments. Um, last piece, and I just want to uh, go back, if I could, on the on, on the Chips Act. When you look at big tech, do you think they're really on board in terms of what what the what the Chips Act is actually going to do? Um, and I'm not just talking about the Intels, which are clearly on board, but everybody else. Well, Micron announced that they're going to be making a $40 billion investment over 10 years in the United States. But look, Andrew, this is not going to be easy. For many years, we just said, let all the production go offshore. Same with solar. The Inflation Reduction Act has $3 billion uh, in solar manufacturing. But we don't do the sil polysilicon production here. We don't do the wafer production here. We don't do the cell production here. And guess what? If you do the wafer production here, but we don't do the cell production, and China isn't going to buy your wafers, then we can't make the supply chain work. So we are at a huge problem of production in this country. We've gone from an $80 billion trade deficit with China in 2000 to a $350 billion trade deficit. We have to rebalance production. This is not a magic pill. This is a down payment, a 10% down payment. But at least we're saying manufacturing matters again. We're going to try to bring some of these supply chains back home. Congressman, Andrew asked you about uh, corporate support of Aerosmith. I wanted to ask you about whether or not you've spoken to the likes of an Alphabet or an Apple specifically on the 1% tax on buybacks. They are large uh, purchasers of their own shares. Uh, they are in your district or around it, and I'm wondering if, if that will impact their plans. I mean, $1 trillion in stock buybacks were done this year, and so this could really, a 1% tax, while it may seem like not much, it, it could really you know, make companies think twice. I haven't spoken to them on this issue, but I've spoken to them all the time on other issues. And the fact, uh, frankly, that I haven't heard from them uh, on this issue suggests to me that they're fine with it. I mean, I, I don't think it's uh, something that's going to consequentially hurt innovation or entrepreneurship to have that 1% tax. And I haven't heard from any of them. And believe me, when they're upset about something, uh, I hear from them as I did hear from people in venture capital and others about the carried interest loophole. Congressman, it's always great to see you. We appreciate your perspective on all of this and uh, look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. Coming up, a new fund backing U.S. energy companies amid a time where ESG funds have sought to push for cleaner practices. Strive Asset Management founder Vivek Ramaswamy joins us to talk ESG 